Well, I, I'm excited to share uh, this concept that's uh, really, I believe, will impact the direction and the quality of your life. The direction and quality of your life. And, and as we close the chapter of 2018, I heard an amen in there. I said, maybe he's like, oh, praise God. As we close the, the chapter of 2018, I believe it is pivotal and I believe it is essential for us to start on the right foot in the right direction for 2019, amen? And the title of this message really encapsulates this concept. And the title of this message is The Solution for Your Resolution. I love that. The Solution for Your Resolution. And, and I love this because so many of us, as, as we watch the ball drop in New York and we're counting down, everyone has their lists, you know, of, of solutions, of new beginnings, of, 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 of new things that they want to incorporate in their life, and, and there's so much hope. There's so much hope in the new year, you know? You're counting it down, and you're like, maybe, just maybe, in the distant future, it will be better than today, right? It, tomorrow has to be better than today. You know what I mean? You get that feeling, and then some of us are crossing our fingers like, please, God. You know, it's got to be better than today. And I love this expectation that New Year's brings to us. And today I want to dive into this passage of Scripture that talks about new things and new beginnings. And it's found in Isaiah 43, verse 18 and 19. And it says this, forget the former things. Oh, I love that. Just right there. It's all on it. Forget the former things. Do not dwell in the past. See, somebody say see. See, I am doing a new thing. Who likes new things? I love new things, right? I, I'm doing a new thing when, not tomorrow, not yesterday, but now, right now, it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I love that word, perceive. The, the, the King James Version says, do you not know it? Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. That's good news, right? That's exciting. This is, this is a passage of promise. This is a passage of saying, no matter what desert you're in, no matter what wasteland you've gone through in your life, God is a way maker. He is a miracle worker. He's gonna make a way where there seems to be no way, and he's doing a new thing. Forget the former things. He is doing a new thing now. I love that. I love that. That's, that's a good promise. And many of us have heard this, but how does this apply to my life? Like, really, how, how does this apply to me? How does this apply to my marriage? How does this apply to my family and my future? This is all good stuff, but how does this apply to me right now? And it falls under this small little question that Isaiah says, sandwiched right in between a promise. And he says this, do you not perceive it? Do you not perceive it? And I love it because in the King James says know it, and that no word, the root word of know, it's actually used in, in a relationship setting, in a marriage of knowing one another, actively participating and pursuing one another, knowing one another. Do you not know what God is doing now? And I think it's so key and parallels with our church that we're all about knowing God, right? Knowing God, being strong, and doing great exploits. Do you know what God is doing? and actively participating in it, participating. You know, I love that word participation, right? Um, it's, I think it's been skewed a little bit because of the participation trophy, you know, that, that we all talk about. You know, everyone gets one as a kid. And, and you know, this is a safe place. This is family. Um, I'm going to be honest. I thrived on the participation trophy. Like, you know what I mean? As a musician, I really did. You know, like as soccer, I thought I was Pele, man. I'm like, look at all my trophies lined up. Every year, we lost every single game. We get a trophy. I'm a winner. You know, this is great. You know, I'm really good. You know, and I was like, all right, I got some confidence, you know? And it's amazing, but you know, as you grow older, uh, the truth be told, the bench always tells the truth, right? <laughs> the bench, and you know, I found myself on the bench a lot. I'm like, well, what's happening, man? Do you not see See my trophies? <laughs> like, come on, you know? Uh, but it's, it's interesting that it's like, uh, you know, it's, it's, to be really honest, I actually had more joy getting the crowd riled up and, and the team. I was like, man, let's go. Come on. New chance. I'm like, well, I definitely don't want to be a cheerleader. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'll actually join a band instead and pick up the guitar. Praise God. That ended up pretty good. Uh, you know, <laughs> but, uh, but it's interesting that in this funny, in this funny story, it's interesting that even though I, so many of us wear the jersey, but are actually playing the game. 
So many of us, do we wear the jersey of Christianity, but are you participating? Are you playing in the game of what is God doing right now? Not yesterday, not back in 95, but right now in this moment, what God is doing. And, you know, resolutions, new beginnings. Everybody wants new stuff, you know. Um, again, I believe it's, it's a time where people really hope for a better version of themselves, right? You know, but statistics show, and this is going to be a Debbie Downer, right? Statistics show that 80% of resolutions fail by February, Wah, wah. <laughs> like, oh man, really? You know what I mean? 80%. That, that is high. Th those are not good chances. And now there's kind of this trend now that people are like, not even making resolutions. They're like, buckle up your seat seatbelts. Here we go. Let's, let's cross your fingers. Here we go, 2019. And it's, it's interesting that so many of us have lost hope, you know, because I think many of our resolutions are almost self focused. I want to be slimmer. I want to be stronger. I want to be smarter. But maybe a better resolution or a better question to ask yourself is this, what breaks your heart? What breaks your heart? What breaks your heart at night? What breaks your heart at the dinner table? What breaks your heart when you watch the news? What breaks your heart when you're by yourself driving alone? What breaks your heart? Because what breaks your heart is an indicator of what God wants to use you to make a difference. God wants to use you to make a difference do not, do not disvalue the, the burden that God puts in your heart because God wants to use you in a powerful, in a powerful way. What breaks your heart? And I think many of us, many of us have lost this sense of urgency. Like, oh, that's for the young kids. <laughs> you know, they can do it. They can go on that mission trip or, or they can do that. No, I, I, at least so many of us have lost this sense of urgency to, you know, of dreams of old and what breaks our heart. And, you know, uh, I love, I love documentaries. I really do. This is a fun fact to me. I love documentaries, sports documentaries specifically. And, you know, hey, all right, I got to get. But, but some of the saddest things, though, is, is the has-beens or what could have been teams that were almost there but they just gave up. Teams that were almost there, and you know, when you see the big picture, you were so close, but you gave up. And this morning, I just wanna encourage you to say, hey, you are so close, don't give up. Don't lose heart, don't give up. God wants to do something miraculously in and through you. And today, I wanna encourage you not to give up on your marriage, not to give up on that dream, not to give up on what burdens your heart. And today, we're gonna to dive into a passage of scripture found in Philippians, Philippians 3, verse 13 through 14. And this is Paul writing to the Philippian church, and it says this, brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, I love that, one thing. What's the one thing? One thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining to what is ahead. I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. I press on. I love, I love the message translation. It just describes it just a little bit sweeter. And it says this, by no means do I count myself an expert in all this, but I got my eye on the goal. I love that. Where God is Becking us onward to Jesus. And I love this phrase right here. And it says this, I'm off running and I'm not turning back. I'm off running and I'm not turning back. Maybe you just got to tell that dysfunctional relationship, hey, I'm off running and I'm not turning back. Maybe you just got to tell that dysfunctional addiction, hey, I'm off running and I'm not turning back. Pastor already said this, the old is gone and the new is here. Today, I am off running and I'm not turning back. And you know, what's interesting is that Paul wrote this. Paul wrote this, and, and if you're not familiar with Paul, he, he's uh, known for writing more than half of the New Testament, right? He, he's a patriarch of our faith. It's amazing, but before Paul was Paul, he was Saul. And I don't know if you're familiar with Saul, but Saul's passion and his profession was to destroying followers of Jesus, and he was good at it. He was really good at it, and it's interesting that Saul had an encounter with Jesus on a road to Damascus. And the thing is, is this, is that Saul was busy. He was busy thinking that he was doing the right thing when he was 100% wrong. You know what the scariest thing in life is? Is being good at the wrong thing. As you reflect your life in 2018, are you busy doing the right thing? 
Are you busy in the wrong areas of your life? When you, so many of us are like, I wish I spent more time with my family. I wish I spent more time at church or invested in my son. Are you busy doing the wrong things? And here is Saul thinking he's 100% right when he's 100% wrong. And he has an encounter, an encounter with Jesus himself. One moment changes everything. One moment, no matter your past, no matter your pain, one moment changes everything. And Paul says, who are you? Jesus saying, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And Saul says, who are you? He knew of Jesus, but he didn't know him. Perceive, do not perceive it. Do not know him. And Saul didn't know who he was, but in one moment changed everything, and his life was forever changed, and he writes this, I press on, I press on, I press. Can you imagine the nightmares that Paul probably had? I mean, can we think about it. He was encouraging the church, and he probably bumped into people that he persecuted. Can you imagine the shame and the condemnation and the regret? Uh, yes, he was writing this to the Philippian church, but I'm sure he was declaring this over himself that I'm pressing past my pain and my failures and my regret. Some of us have just stopped pressing towards what God has called us to do. Maybe it's because of past performance. You know, one of the most common weights that I see people carry is, is the weight of yesterday's performance. And I have good news. The message of grace is this, is that your history, your history does not determine your destiny. Your history does not determine your destiny. And your failures do not have to frame your future. Your past, your failures do not have to frame your future. And this was Paul's anthem. This was Paul's anthem as he was declaring because, see, for Paul, nothing behind him was going to help him for what was in front of him. I'll say that again. Nothing behind him was going to help him what was right in front of him. And to step into the future, he had to forget the past. And the same is for you and for me. Maybe some of us here, you know, we're carrying such present pain. It's not necessarily the past, but it's currently right now. The weight that you're carrying, and it's just, it's too much. You're tired of life. You stop believing. You got to listen to Journey a little bit more. Don't stop believing. Don't, don't stop. I'm not going to sing it, but you know what I mean? But don't stop believing. Like, for real, they had it right. Don't stop believing. Don't, don't quit. We say this all the time in our church. If you don't quit, you win. If you don't quit, you win. You know, what, what has God called you to finish that you got to finish strong on? Is it, is it hope for family salvation? Is it, is it, is it maybe a dream or a vision? Is it, is it a marriage that needs to be restored and it seems impossible? Maybe it's hope for healing or maybe it's breakthrough from an addiction. And the thing is, is this, is that the closer you get to doing what God wants done, the harder the enemy will fight you. I'll say that again. The closer you get to doing what God wants done, the harder the enemy will fight you. And today, I just want to encourage you, and not only encourage you, but equip you with three solutions for your resolution, right? Three solutions for your resolution. And the first one is this, peace that redeems your past. Peace that redeems your past. I love this. Peace that redeems your past. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says this, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old is gone, and the new is here. This is good news. The old is gone, and the new is here. See, the thing is about peace is that peace is a choice. It's a choice to say, you know what? I'm going to choose peace. I'm going to grab hold of what God has done for me because here's the thing. Here's good news. God's already redeemed you. God's already redeemed you, and the thing is, is that we have to choose peace. We have to choose, and I think this is interesting for us to know, is that we decide whether our past will remind you or define you. We have to decide whether your past will remind you or define you. And I think the thing is, is that we live in yesterday's failures, but how long will we plan to allow the people who mistreated you influence you? How long will you let that situation that you messed up define you? How long will you let, and I'm telling you, there's something peaceful and something healing and, and just restoring when you let go. See, the thing is, is what you did yesterday and how long you did it is far less concerning to God than where your heart is today. God heals, he redeems, and he restores. 
And maybe for some of us, you're like, well, I don't necessarily live in the past, but the thing is, is that my past keeps coming up and, and it keeps haunting me and I can't break this addiction. I can't break this thought pattern. I can't break this, this thing in my life that I want free. And every year it's on my resolution of just, to, just to be free. Well, I think this is a solution right here. Yes, past that redeems your, uh, peace that redeems your past, but this is a, such a powerful quote. And it says this, if you think the way you used to think, you will do the things you used to do. I'll say that again. If you think the way you used to think, you will do the things you used to do. There's something powerful in our thought pattern. What do you think about when you think about late at night? What do you think about when you have that argument with your spouse? What do you think about with your kids? What do you think about? Because what you think about is how the direction of your life and how it affects you. And maybe I'll go even further of this is maybe watch your words. There's power in your words. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, amen? And so watching your words because the thing is nobody wants to be around a negative Nancy, right? <laughs> nobody does. It's like it's poisonous. It's like, oh, my gosh. It's just it's not, it's not good. It's not life-giving. It's life-sucking. And I think this is so key for us. You cannot blame yourself in a better future. You cannot blame yourself in a better future. Blame enables us to smuggle our issues into the future. I'll say that again. Blame enables us to smuggle our issues, our past, our failures into the future. You don't want to bring that into the new year. I mean, I know that was hurt. I know it was hurtful. I know it was painful. But you know what? You have to let it go because when you speak that blame, if you, when you speak that poison, it brings that dysfunction back into the new year. And you don't want that. You have to release and let it go. And maybe some of us are like, well, you know what? We, we, we idolize on what God's done in the past and we're blinded by what he's doing right now in the present. It's not necessarily our failures, but we're like, well, there was that tent revival and I got saved and God works this way. But let me say, God wants to do a new thing in your life, a new thing in your life. You know, it's funny, I grew up in church and I grew up Southern Baptist and it was great. I I studied the word of God and it was amazing. We would have these tent revivals and actually, truth be told, my dad actually took my mom to a Billy Graham uh, revival and that was their first date. So that's that's how I grew up, you know what I mean? (laughs) Real spiritual, you know? (laughs) Like, but it's like, we We'd always talk about, man, those revivals years ago. But what's God doing right now? What, what is God doing right now? Yes, that was amazing what God did yesterday, but God wants to use you for today, right now, in this season, in this season. And God is saying, I'm doing a new thing. And he's asking the question, do you not perceive it? So peace that redeems your past. And number two, vision, vision that reveals your victory. I love that. Vision that reveals your victory. And for every challenge that you have, envision Christ conquering that problem. Envision Christ conquering that pain and that sickness because God is an overcoming God. Amen. Philippians 1.6 says this, and I'm sure of this, that he who began a good work in you I love that. He who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. God is always faithful if we do not quit. And our eyes need to be not not necessarily on our problems and studying our problems, but our eyes need to be fixed on the answer, on the solution. And that is Jesus. That is Jesus. See, every time I got in trouble in my life personally, it's because my eyes were fixed on my current situation. And I forgot to see who he really was. See, Paul knew who Jesus was, but he didn't really know him. He was blinded. He didn't know, he didn't really perceive what God was doing right then, right now. And I'm telling you, lift up your eyes. God wants to do a new thing. And God will never give up on you. He'll never give up on you. And if you don't give up on him, eventually, eventually, he'll bring you to the place of promise. He'll bring you to the place if you do not quit. And the thing is, is this, God doesn't promise a, a trouble-free life, but he, do, he does promise that he will never leave you or forsake you. Lamentations 3.22 says this, because the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning, every single morning. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. God never omits a dream that he's placed in your heart, and it's never too late. It's never too late to start fresh again. It's never too late to start new again. God is doing a new thing. So peace that redeems your past, vision that reveals your victory, and lastly, faith 
that moves you forward. Faith that moves you forward. Did you know that faith is an action word? Faith is not stagnant. Faith causes you to move forward, to press on, to keep on going. John 14, 6 says this, Jesus answered, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is your way. He is your answer. He is your truth in the midst of lies that people told you or lies of the enemy that he keeps on reeling in your mind. He is truth. And even if you feel death in your life, if you feel stagnant or dry, he is life. He he is your source. He is your healer. God is the way. You know, for me, this is not something that I just came up with or concepts that I came to for, for a fancy message, but this is something that I, I lived in. This is something I walked with, and honestly, I, I found freedom in. And I remember specifically, I remember specifically in college, you know, all throughout my life, specifically, my mom would always declare, you're anointed, you're gifted, God's called you for ministry, God has a hand on your life, and I was like, yeah, that's great, <laughs> I get it, I'm in this band right now, you know, <laughs> this garage band, you know what I mean, I'm like, it was great, <laughs> a lot of covers, did birthday parties, everything was great, you know, <laughs> and I thought that was cool, right, <laughs> I was okay with low living, <laughs> you know, but God had his hand on me, right, and, and, but there, that truth was speaking over and over over, over my life. And I found there was a moment where God called me into full-time ministry and I was at a fork in the road and I remember I, I met with Pastor Dustin and he said, hey, I want you to be the guy. I want you to be the worship leader of our church and just to be the sound of, 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 of revival, what God's doing here in Allen. And he was telling me all the things that God is gonna do. And I was like, that's awesome, but you got the wrong guy. You got the wrong guy because I was so focused on my past pain. And I was okay living at a low level. I was, I, I was discrediting myself of saying, no, 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 this is great. I believe I'll pray for you from a distance, but there's no way that God really wants to use me because of my past. Because oh, well, my past failures or, 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 or just the things that I struggled with, I, I, there's no way. There's no way. And I was like, well, let, let me think about it. <laughs> let me think about it. Let me, let me sit on it for a little bit. And I, and I was praying, and I was like, God, like, is this you? Is this what you want me to do? Because actually I had an awesome opportunity to be a full-time in the career that I wanted to be in. And I was, I was busy doing good things, but was I busy doing the best thing? And the thing is, to be really honest and transparent, my goal in college was to live comfortably. The goal in life was to, to be okay, to have, you know, the white picket fence, the house, you know, the wife, the family, everything, the car, the, you know, everything perfect and comfortable. But let me tell you something, God doesn't call us to be comfortable, right? Faith moves forward. And the thing is, I was at a fork in the road, and I was like, God... This is scary, but I gotta take a step. There's something burning inside of me, just how it's burning inside of you, that God is putting dreams in your heart that was from years back, and he is faithful. Do not give up. And I said, yes. I was like, all right, I'll do it. And then I started thinking about it this past week. What if I said no? What if I said no? to that step? What if I said no to what God was calling me to be? What if I said no? And I started thinking about it. I wouldn't have met my wife. I wouldn't have met these crazy guys called the Movement Band, now 1132 Music. <laughs> I, I, my life would have been dramatically different, dramatically different. And I just, I, I started to think about, it was just one small pivot, one small step. And the thing is, is this, God's not asking you to take leaps and bounds. He's just asking you to take just a step, just a small step on what God has called you to do. And you have no idea the impact that it can have in not only your life, but the lives around you, taking that step of faith. And the rest is history. It's amazing to see what God did with one step. Faith is not stagnant. Faith moves you forward. Faith moves you forward. And today I want to close with this passage of Scripture that I believe is going to bless your heart. It's going to bless you tremendously. And it's found in Revelation 21, 4 through 7. It says this, He will wipe every tear from their eyes. I love that. Whatever tear you have, whatever pain you have, God knows. God knows. He sees your heart. He sees your pain. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, no more mourning or crying or pain, 
for the old order of things have passed away. He was seated on the throne and said, I am making everything new. I'm making everything new again. Then he said, write this down. Anytime the Bible says write this down, you gotta write this down. Write this, write this down, write this down. For these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, it is done. It is done. I am the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give water without cost from the spring of water of life. Those who are victorious will inherit all this, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. If you need family, he's your family. If you need strength, he's your strength. If you need peace, he's your peace. If you need vision, he's your vision. If you need faith, I have good news. It is done. It is finished. God is the alpha, the omega, the beginning, and the end. God is faithful, and he will never leave you or forsake you. God is good. He'll never leave you. So don't forget to press. Don't, don't forget to press forward. I came here this morning just to not lose heart. Don't give up. If you don't quit, you win. Keep on pressing. Some of us need to say, hey, I press over depression. I press over anxiety. I press over the lies that were spoken over me when I was younger. I press over loneliness. I press over fear. If you have any strength in your body, just press on. Press on. Do not give heart. Do not lose hope and take heart. And I'll end with this passage that we started with. is that Forget the former things. Do not dwell in the past. See. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness, streams in the wasteland. You know, Jesus didn't quit on his mission. You shouldn't on yours. Jesus saw you and he said, you are worth fighting for. He saw you and your family and said, you're worth fighting for. You're worth redeeming. And I'm telling you, don't quit. Because guess what? The victory's already won. We are already redeemed. And today, in this moment, just like Saul, who now is Paul, had a one encounter and one moment changes everything. And how awesome would it be for the last Sunday of the year to just make one step and it changes everything. Just one step, one step towards Jesus, one step pressing past fear and anxiety can change everything. Some of us here, whether here in Allen or in Wiley, some of us need, need peace in our life. You, you've, been, you've been having night terrors. You can't sleep. There's anxiety. You're medicated and you cannot quit it. I'm telling you, Jesus is the healer. He is the Prince of Peace. He's going to give you pre peace right now. This could be your moment to having peace in your life, peace in your family, peace in your heart and your soul. Maybe some of us here today, you've been blinded and you feel like you're running on a treadmill. It's like, I'm running and I'm not getting ground. I'm tired. I'm tired of pressing. I, I don't see the answer. Maybe, just maybe, God's going to give you vision. Vision again to the promise that he promised you when you were just a child. I believe God is faithful and God is true. And I believe with all my heart, I believe that some of us here today are going to get the faith to move forward. It's time to get off the bench. It's time to get off the bench. It's time to play. It's time to play because God is moving right now. Do we want to be a part of it? And I believe that this church is a yes church of saying, I want to be a part of what God is doing. And it's incredible to see the testimony after testimony of what God has done in this house. And the question is, do you not perceive it? Do you want to participate in it? Because God is going to do amazing things in 2019. The best is yet to come. Believe that, that the best is yet to come.